Uh, I mean, to be frank, uh, Twitter was having pretty serious revenue challenges and cost challenges um, before the acquisition talks started. And a any company that is dependent on advertising um, has had a hard time. So uh, if you look at, say, Snap uh, or you know, uh, you know, Google, Facebook, whatnot, they've all had a difficult time with uh, advertising revenue dropping. Um, and t Twitter is more, uh, you know, currently uh, more vulnerable than they are to uh, advertising because most of Twitter's advertising is large brand advertising as opposed to direct response. So it's kind of like a much more of a discretionary uh, ad spend than it is for, uh, you know, if, like if you, if, you, if you can do direct response for a specific product. Um, so, and, and then we also recently have had a lot of difficulty with um, uh, activist groups uh, pressuring uh, major advertisers to stop spending money on Twitter. Um, this is despite us doing everything possible to appease them um, and to make it clear that moderation rules and hateful conduct rules have not changed uh, and we're continuing to enforce them. Um, the, a, a number of major advertisers have stopped spending on Twitter. Um, so this, but this is, this doesn't seem right because um, we've made no change in our operations at all and um, but nonetheless, the activist groups have been successful in, in, in causing a massive drop in Twitter advertising revenue. And we've done our absolute best to appease them, and nothing is working. So this is a major concern, because, and I think this is, frankly, an attack on the First Amendment. Um, like, if, if activist groups can pressure uh, advertisers upon which Twitter is fundamentally dependent um, to, you know, suppress free speech, then that doesn't seem right. My workload went up from about, I don't know, 70 to 80 hours a week to probably 120. Um, so, yeah, I go to sleep, I wake up, I work, go to sleep, wake up, work, do that seven days a week. I'll have to do that for a while, so no choice. Um, but I think, once Twitter is set on the right path, I think it is a much easier thing to manage than SpaceX or Tesla. So, um, and I, I, I mean, I really understand the internet and how to make, uh, so I wrote software, wrote software, I, I wrote software personally for 20 years. Um, you know, I was one of the key, key people behind uh, x.com, which became PayPal. Um, and so I also like I'm aware of like a, I know how to make a, a way better PayPal. Um, because you uh, built PayPal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, I mean, with a lot of other people, but there's there's a product plan I wrote, which I wish I'd kept a copy of in July of 2000, where I thought it would be possible to make the most valuable financial institution in the world. And we're, we're going to execute that plan from 22 years ago, which amazingly no one has done. And and so I, I think that's part of why I think Twitter will be ultimately extremely valuable, because I'm going to execute the X.com game plan from 22 years ago um, with some improvements. Um, and, um, and then we're also going to obviously make Twitter just a way better system. Um, I mean, it's, it stands to reason that, um, you know, if, 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 if a social media company is, uh, is not taking uh, steps to uh, make it pl positive to be on that social platform, then, then people won't come or they'll leave, you know? So you speak of sort of anti-Semitism or racism or anything like that. Well, I mean, if who's going to stay on a platform if, if that's prevalent? Like, that's... that's Obviously. Yeah, I yep. mean, come on. And apart from its inherent wrongness, if who's going to stay on the platform? Um, so, it, it, like, you, you, you want to be... It needs to be something where... Um, like, our, our goal with, with Twitter is, like, how do we get 80% of America? Maybe not, like, the sort of far left and the far right, but, but and maybe we don't want them necessarily. But uh, how do we get 80% of the public to join a digital town square and voice their opinion and, ex and exchange ideas and maybe once in a while change their minds 
Um, and on occasion. Yeah, I mean, you know, once in a while. Um, okay, so, um, I mean, we got a bit of criticism, a bit of criticism from our, for our Q3 results because we um, had a lot of cars in transit. Um, and the reason was that we, we got too big for our cars to actually be transported in the final few weeks. Um, we just weren't enough car carriers and weren't enough ships. So, uh, but it's actually good. It's actually good in the long run um, to to smooth out deliveries um, and actually have cars in transit at the end of the quarter uh, because then you're not rushing to get everything delivered by the end of the quarter and paying all these expedite fees. Um, so, well, the, the scaling constraints change as time goes by. In, in the beginning, we 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 were just very vertically integrated because the suppliers didn't take us seriously. Um, like we could get hardly any of the the a the, of the best suppliers wouldn't talk to us because the car startup has not been successful in the United States since Chrysler in the thir in the twenties, I believe they started. So it's been a century since a car company was successful in the U.S. That was not a, you know, not a foreign car company coming in with that was already successful in their home market. So, but for an American car startup, it was the first Tesla's first success in a hundred years. So you can imagine if you're an auto supplier, that doesn't sound like a smart financial decision. Exactly. Um, so then we we had to do a, just build a lot of the stuff ourselves, be vertical integrated, or we couldn't couldn't create the car. Um, and, and then that ended up being um, an asset because now we understood so much about the entire supply chain and what it took to build a car. Um, so we were able to design a, a more integrated uh, vehicle uh, that that actually um, ne needed far fewer parts um, and costs less and weighs less and has higher performance. Um, but it is looking increasingly like for some of the critical um, elements of batteries that Tesla will, will need to get into the mining business, and mining and refining. I, I actually um, rarely try to convince anyone to invest in Tesla. Um, and many times I've recommended people don't invest in Tesla, and I've said our stock is too high, uh, but then people just ignore me and keep buying the stock for some reason. Um, so, um, but if you, I, I think at, at, at a very high level, I'd say the, that autonomy is an insanely fundamental breakthrough, and, and no one is even close to Tesla for solving generalized autonomy or generalized self-driving vehicles. No one's even close. Um, and and uh, with self-driving, as I was talking about earlier, the, the car becomes, call it roughly, five times more useful. But it costs the same to build. Now, can you imagine what would happen if a company was doing, they were doing like a 25 to 30 percent gross margins, but suddenly that same thing was five times more valuable? That what would that do to the value of Tesla and the value of that car? It boggles the mind, actually. Um, so, you know, if you think of net present value of future cash flows, if you actually do the math on that, it's insane. Um, then there's also the Optimus program, which is our humanoid robot, um, which we will leverage our manufacturing expertise and and the intelligence we've developed for self-driving to have a useful humanoid robot. Um, now, the, the economy is fundamentally GDP per capita times capita. If you no longer have a constraint on capita because of a useful humanoid robot, it is not clear that there's any limit to the size of the economy. I mean, I think the, the long-term goal for our supercharger stations is that they um, all have solar, like Tesla solar and batteries at them so that they are, uh, as many as possible, are self-sustaining, that the, that the supercharger stations generate the energy um, during the day, and then also have a lo localized battery pack um, to so that people can charge at night, so that that the, the Tesla super supercharging stations would continue to function even in a zombie apocalypse.